Like for example, the, the, the flight plan form that I was telling you about before he came mm -hmm. was revised last year. And by the end of, by, by, by the, the, the end of last year, it was revised. You understand? Mm -hmm. In order to meet with the changing, you know, trends of, of uh, things that are happening in the aviation world. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be left behind because we are part of the, 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 the global aviation industry. And so we also changed. We did a lot of training. We had uh, to in invite um, our experts to come down here to train our personnel. And we were able to transform and change with it successfully and be at par with the whole world. Re uh, now again, there is a transition taking place mm -hmm. from aeronautical information services. We are changing to aeronautical information management. This is all based on the trend of the change that is happen glo happening globally. There is, um, uh, like I said, we are moving from digital and analog to satellite and, you know, you know, and all these sort of things. So the, the aircraft are also modernizing. You are having modern aircraft coming into being. And also we, because we, 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 the service that we render is to ensure that um, the, the flow of information necessary for the safety, regularity, and efficiency of international and national nav air navigation. So we need to change with the flow. And we are also moving now from aeronautical information services, not just providing services, but we also manage efficiently the services that we provide for the end users. And the end users are, you know, Kiva and the like, the pilots, the captains, and the, the, the airline operation personnel. Okay, just to remind our viewers, we are all seated here today. It's International Civil Aviation Day. And before, just for us to wrap, us, wrap up, um, Kiva, I mean, can you tell us something? Uh, yes, uh, just as Reverend uh, mentioned, and uh, Mr. Diva, aviation is a dynamic entity. Things keep changing. Things are in the move. Technology is, uh, is advancing day in day out mm -hmm. and uh, we being part of the global world aviation world we don't have to be left behind we, we, we should not be left behind and this is why just uh, as you mentioned um, the aircraft technology is, is more, being modernized now we have glass cockpits um, from na the analog uh, um, systems to uh, electronic systems and uh, these it's more to do with uh, satellite navigation now than the conventional ground-based equipment. Uh, that being the case, this is why navigation you have, um, is more accurate now. And uh, that's why you seldom hear about um, accidents in avia um, and transportation now. Mm -hmm. Because okay. machines are so reliable. Statistics have shown that over 80% of accidents are all human Based mm -hmm. human error, um, human factors. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this trend will continue, and therefore, we have to be moving along with the world. Uh, we need to modernize our equipment, ground based, and all other facilities that we have at the airport. Okay, and Lamin Diva, your yeah, final word? Um, in keeping with the change that we are having on here, uh, the Gambia Civil Aviation Authority is also coming up with plans to actually have what we call non aeronautic service revenue. Uh, if you look at the amount we are having now, it may be very much insignificant. But if you look at other airports around the world, what you see is you have Aeropolis, airport city. The concept now that we are, we are toying around with trying to implement is, is to have an Aeropolis, that's an airport city. If you land in the Bangladesh International Airport, we intend to have what we call an accommodation setup. It could be a motel or whatever, or a hotel. Our dream is actually to have a hotel, mm -hmm. and then have restaurants, have shopping malls, so that when you land to Bangladesh International Airport, it's a 100% one-stop shop. If you have to, to, to catch a flight or connect from there on and you're delayed, what happens is you are able to have a, a place to rest, you are able to move around and get all the stuff that you need, so it's going to be a whole 100% one-stop shop. That's our intent. Uh, okay. in, in the corporate plan. I hope it comes to the fruition. And always I, I keep mean. saying, management keeps saying thank you to, to the government, the amount of attention and commitment they give to civil aviation. Okay. Because every time we plan for these things, they see the value and actually add weight on it and make sure it happens. Okay, thank you very much to have you all in our studio here. It was International Civil Aviation Day. Well, viewers, this is what we, all we have for you. Thank you for watching.
President Yahya Jame invites you to discover Africa's finest investment destination, the Gambia. The beginning of my term of office for the next five years coincides strategically with the commencement of implementation of phase one of the program for accelerated growth and employment page, which spells out government strategic priorities and activities for the period 2012 to 2015. The hallmark of the page is that it is dynamic and transformative and therefore has the propensity to transition the Gambia into a highly developed country with the highest living standards for the citizens. Following the contours of the Gambia River to its estuary on the Atlantic coast, this small but accessible country is a natural gateway to West Africa. For many Westerners, the Gambia is Africa's closest destination, located only five hours from Europe and seven from the United States. Tourists flock here each season to enjoy the lush tropical climate, inviting beaches and world-class amenities complemented by the Gambia's friendly English-speaking populace. In addition to these lifestyle factors, the Gambia's stability, size and business incentives offer a great opportunity for foreign investors. The Gambia has a very attractive business environment. It's easy to bring investment funds in and to take them out as well. There are no exchange controls at all, and there are no controls on the capital and current account, which really makes it easy to do business uh, in the Gambia. First word that comes to mind is easy. To have your business registered and to get all the incentives that the government has promised to potential investors. That is very easy. To access work permits and resident permits could be sorted out in a day. We've handled such cases and it's so easy to come in and to regularize your status without uh, any hassle or any harassment. The Gambia's small population gives investors easy access to key government officials and allows them to set up their businesses with a minimum of red tape. With multiple 3G networks, the Gambia also offers one of the fastest wireless data rates in Africa. Doing business in the Gambia, there's a great advantage because of our size. We're a small country as um, relative to all the African countries, a population of 1.5 million people. Therefore, the decision-making process, you know, is quite fast. There is very little, if any, bureaucracy in accessing government officials. We find this to be extremely invaluable as it aids us in executing business transactions swiftly uh, and uh, speedily. The speed of establishing a business in the Gambia is an attractive consideration, but to foreign investors like Merskline, stability and competitiveness are equally important.